back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe where I do all things baby lifestyle and more. Today, I have a brand new video. I'm going to share with you how to build a pumping routine with multiples. Not only when you have twins, but when you have multiple children that you have to take care of, and you have a newborn infant, and you have to build a pumping schedule. This is more based on my experience as, a, as an exclusive pumper. I haven't done the breastfeeding pumping, but I can share a little bit of what I would have done if I was breastfeeding and pumping at the same time. I did that for the first couple of months, so I'll say two, three months with the twins. But once they got a little bit older, it was just a little bit difficult to be breastfeeding them at the same time. Because if you have twins or multiples, you know that you have to keep them on the same schedule. Otherwise, you will go nuts. So when I say the same schedule, they have to be sleeping at the same time, they have to be eating at the same time, because then you're gonna have a lag of you're feeding one, the other one's sleeping, and then you feed the other one, and then the other one's sleeping, and then you don't have time for yourself. So believe me when I say they have to be on the same schedule. So this pumping routine that I've set up is to accommodate their schedule and my five-year-old schedule. Uh, again, I've shared the or my original video with my five-year-old a couple of years ago, four years ago, five years ago, um, on my YouTube channel. I've done a couple of things differently, but I'll say that the essence of the routine is still there. The things that I love to do, the things that I liked with my first experience, I just sort of adjusted it a little bit better for this time around. So without further ado, let's go through my routine. I just got a new haircut. I don't know how I feel about it. I have bangs, so I have them tied to the side because right now I don't know how I feel about it. First things first, once you've given birth, you have to start pumping immediately. When I say immediately, it's when you're in your room, you're settled. I recommend renting a pump at the hospital because it is a hospital grade pump. So it's strong. It is exactly what you need to set up the first couple of weeks because what you want to do is really imitate what your baby's doing. Because I was doing a mix of breastfeeding and uh, pumping, I do feel that the breastfeed or my my baby's actually sucking on the nipple did help a lot, especially for clogs. But the first things first is rent a pump from the hospital. Most hospitals do rent the hospital grade pumps. You will have it in your room. Search first the brand of the pump. Some have Medela. The one that I had in my hospital was Amida, Amia. So I was very new with it, um, and I kind of follow what the nurse told me, which was ridiculous um, speed, like the highest speed, the highest strength, and the longest time. I don't know why I decided to go with it. I guess I said, oh, I almost wrecked my nipples. It was terrible, and I remember like the first couple of pump, I was just like, oh my god, like I don't remember this being so bad. Like what? <laughs> like. You know how in birth you forget everything? Well, I thought in pumping, as I forgot as well, like the the pain. But no, follow your instincts. So research the pump first before going to a hospital, preferably so you know what the settings to use. Uh, but first things first, run the pump and start pumping as soon as you are in your room, stable, settled with your baby and hopefully your support system. And you are then going to set your routine. Usually the nurse will give you a sheet so you can keep track of the routine. So when did you start pumping? Um, how much you pumped? I personally like to keep it on my phone on my notes. So I have the date. I have the hours. And when you first start, so the second thing you want to do is pump every two hours. Um, you can go up to three at night just so you can have a little bit more sleep. I wouldn't go past three, especially the first three months when you're establishing your milk supply. Number three, you really want to keep track of the milk that's coming out of you. First, because you need to track how much you're feeding your babies. Uh, second, that will give you an indication of how much milk you're able to produce in 24 hours. With this, I don't want you to become obsessed of how much milk is coming out because it can become obsessive. <laughs> I mean, I've lived through it. Uh, it's more for you to know and understand, okay, if my babies are eating, I believe my babies at one point were eating 24 melt each. So that's 48 
I had to pump between 48 ounces and more. Um, so that gave me an indication, okay, if I'm pumping, let's say, eight ounces at each uh, two hours, then I'm overproducing. But if I'm going less, then I will be able to see if I could sleep a little bit longer, you know. But don't play around with your schedule too much because I've noticed, especially when I traveled, when I play with my schedule a bit too much, my milk supply dips. So first, pump as soon as you are stable in your room. Second, make sure that you uh, look for the brand that you are going to be using to set up your schedule every two hours. And third, you really want to keep track of the milk that's coming out of you. Just for information and purposes of yourself to hold yourself accountable of how much milk you've produced and see how you can play around with that in terms of sleeping a little bit more or freezing milk. So that is very great to keep track every two hours and know how much milk is coming out. When you look for the um, indications of the pump that you're renting at the hospital, do feel up uh, what your body's telling you. So if your body's telling you that it hurts, most likely the speed is too high or the duration is too long or the flanges or whatever you're using is not the correct size. Make sure that you get sized with the lactation consultant available at the hospital or with the nurse because at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, you can always tell them like, hey, we measure at this, it's not working, I need another size and keep sort of the trial and error. You just have to make sure that it does not hurt. Pumping shouldn't be hurting you. Um, yes, it's a bit uncomfortable, but it shouldn't be hurting you. So keep that in mind to listen to your body. If it's hurting you, do not continue because you can really, really make some damage there. And obviously it's going to be hard, right? To continue pumping if it's not working. Same as breastfeeding. When I was breastfeeding, it was hurting. So ask around, what could you do to alleviate the pain. I remember the nurse had recommended some nipple shields at the time, and those were sent from God. It made my experience so much different. And then I remember going down on the speeds from what the original nurse had told me, and that had made a difference as well. I'm going to be posting a video of things that I did to remediate or to heal my nipples because it did at the beginning because of those high speeds that I was doing. It was a complete wreck. I was bleeding. It was terrible. But thankfully, within a day, I was able to restore and continue and try it again. Another thing when following the two to three hours, make sure you put alarms on your phone. So make up your list of hours that you will be pumping. Set your alarms. That way, you know, you're not going to forget. It's going to tell you immediately what pump number it is. And also what I like to do because I had it on my notes already scheduled for the day. When I woke up at 8 in the morning, I know I had to pump at 8, then I had to pump at 11, then I had to pump at 2, then I had to pump at 5. Like I already knew my schedule. So let's say uh, after when I established my milk supply and when I was ready to have activities, I was going to yoga. So I knew if my class is at 7, I need to pump either 30 minutes before or right after I'm done class. So it kind of like helps you plan out your day properly. So make sure that you put it on your phone and you write down everything from what time you've pumped, how much you have pumped out. Most of the times, I will say the pump, the hospital grade pump already has the um, letdown embedded into the machine. So as soon as you start, it will mimic the letdown and then go after two minutes into the regular sucking section. If it doesn't have that, make sure because you've Googled what pump you're going to be renting, you know that if you have to be doing it manually or it already has it automatically because that also makes a difference and you want to make sure that you do it correctly. Let me know down below if there's any brands that you guys are going to be using that you're not familiar with. I'll say that I've tried it almost all. Um, so you really want to make sure that you've searched the pump prior. Second, something that also wasn't clear to me and or I couldn't remember was if your pump session starts, your next pump session starts the time that you end pumping or when you started pumping. So just make sure that your pump, your next pump session will start from the time you started pumping. So if you started pumping at 2 p.m., your next pump will be four because you have three and you have four. Or if you're doing every three hours, it will be five. So don't count your next pumping session when you're done 
pumping. It's recommended to pump between 15 to 20 minutes. I personally pump for 30 minutes, sometimes 25 minutes. That's what works for me. That's what gets my entire breast completely empty. Again, do what's best for you, what works for your body, the speed that works for you, the duration that works for you. For me, I do 30 minutes. That's what works. That's what I get my milk out. Um, again, don't do anything just because you're trying to force your body to do something because I did notice that when you stress about it or when you become very obsessed about it, your milk just doesn't come as much as you expect or hope. Take it by experience. I've lived through it. And sometimes having like a safety blanket in the sense of, I remember one night I woke up and like in panic because I forgot to pump. Um, and I usually do, I pump, have the bottles ready for my babies to feed, and then I'll pump as soon as they start feeding. So I remember waking up in panic because I forgot to pump, and I'm like, what are my babies going to eat? So as a safety blanket, I got one of the, my favorite formulas that I used to feed Olivia when she was a baby, which is Hip Organics. From uh, You can either get it for the Netherlands, they make it in England. And I just had it in my house and it was there like a safety blanket. If I didn't pump enough, because I had to pump for two at the end of the day, I still have to pump for two. Having the formula in the back, it's kind of like what gave me my safety blanket that I knew that my babies were going to be okay. They were going to be fat. At the beginning, I did notice that a lot of milk was coming out. So I did stash a lot. And my babies, because they were preemie, they were only drinking one ounce or two or one and a half really for the longest time. So the surplus, I was able to freeze. So I had some in the freezer. I had my formula there, my preferred formula. So I kind of like had a little bit of a moment of relief. I'll be okay. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. So just make sure that you have that mentality because I've noticed that when you start obsessing with it and really making and forcing your body to produce, it's not going to be a journey that you're going to love. And most likely the milk is not going to come out as much as you expect it. I struggled a lot with the AM pump. So the 3 AM pump and the 5 AM pump, I just couldn't get up. So I noticed what helped, which is something that I share in my previous videos, is have my pump clean and ready right next to my bed. When I say right next, like it's right there. I put it on. I will fall asleep with it. Trust me. It's happened to everyone. Thankfully, my pumps do turn off after a certain time. My medallas turn off after 30 minutes. And I believe the mom cozies as well. And the willows after 25 minutes. So whichever I was using, I knew it was going to turn off eventually. And it automatically changes from stimulation to expression. So I kind of felt comfortable just passing out with my pumps in like sitting down position. You got to do what you got to do, girl, <laughs> just to get some sleep in. So I noticed that that helped me a lot. So as soon as my babies will wake up, my milk was already expressed, like it was there. And that did help to feed them the overnight feeds. The last tip I would like to share with you guys is finding something that you love to do while pumping. So if you have the routine of pumping while your babies are eating, sometimes you won't have a lot of time to yourself because you're focusing on feeding them with the bottles while you have your pumps on. Wireless pumps is my most recommended just because you get some more freedom to do stuff. But at, in the AM, if you don't want to fall asleep or you can't fall asleep at three or five in the morning, find something that you love doing. I love reading. I started getting to a lot of gut health. So I have a lot of books about guts. <laughs> I like to read about it. I like to read about food, making different dishes, especially for my five-year-old. I'm trying to get her to have a diverse um, sense of uh, taste buds like um, i'm trying to get her away from the picky eating because i've noticed that she was leaning towards that and now that the twins are eating i'm trying to make a diverse set of meals not just from my culture but from different cultures so i kind of started doing something that i like during those hours sorry during those 30 minutes I, at night i don't wash my pumps i will put in the freezer sorry in the fridge or I will just leave it in the sink where I have all my concoction. If you haven't seen my video on how I have my bathroom set up, you should go check that out. But then I'll have my other set of pumps clean, ready for the next use. And then in the morning when I wake up and everyone's awake, then I'll wash everything. Because I did notice that that makes a difference, that I don't have to wake up completely to pour my milk and wash everything. I just have to wake up, pour, and serve it to my babies as soon as they wake up. So make sure you find something that you love doing. At one point, I also <laughs> started getting into trading. Um, just 
maybe not that way, but find something that you like doing and just have that you time, that alone time. Reflect on everything that you're doing. Um, I do a lot of journaling as well. I like to write on my journal to my babies to kind of like tell them like what mommy's going through, how blessed I am to have them, all three of them, um, especially going through the whole NICU experience. Like it has been, it has made me have a different perspective on how grateful I am for my babies being healthy, being strong. So those are my tips on how to set up your pumping routine. Let me know down below any questions that you might have. Believe me, once you start setting this up, you'll be filled with questions and that is okay. Thankfully, I am here to answer. I love to help people. I love getting your feedbacks that I am helpful and that I'm making your journey easier because that's basically one of the reasons why I started my channel because I was one of you guys <laughs> thinking, what am I doing? How does this work? I must not be the... So that is all for today, guys, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye now.